It's that time of the day to bring you the OJTV news. I am Mujisala Sholaja. Short on our stories, Governor Dakpo Abiodu implores residents of Ogun State to celebrate Christmas with moderation in the face of second wave of COVID-19. Nigeria records 939 cases of COVID-19 in one day. Federal government states local governments share 601.11 billion era from federation accounts. French President Emmanuel Macron tests positive for COVID-19. When you change the thinking, you change the quality of your life. And on sport news tonight, Russia's Olympic ban reduced to two years. This and more sporting stories much later on the news. My name is Moses or Jerumi. Stay with us. The current administration in Ogun State has signed a memorandum of understanding on the increase of the power generation and capacity to the state secretariat and other government establishments. The secretary to the state government, Tokumbo Talabi, signed the MOU on behalf of the state government. Governor's Office Correspondent Tunde Olanima reports. The signing of the Memorandum of Understanding is to improve the power generation and capacity of the independent power plants in the state. Special Advisor to the Governor of Ogun State on Energy, Lulu Adubifa, said the MOU is giving credence to the commitment of the current administration to adequate power supply in the state. So this MOU is a historic agreement between the Ogun State Government and Pan Engineering, who are the current providers of the IPP, which supplies the State Government and its entities in Abelkuta. Uh, effectively, we're going to be in almost doubling the capacity of the plant, which is going to show in the amount of power that is going to be available to not just the Secretariat, no Kemoso, but also the government buildings in Ibarra and around the Abelkuta metropolis. Uh, we look forward to having this developed in the, within the next three months, and uh, it's going to be a win-win for everybody. The counterparts in the signing express their readiness to deliver on the agreements of the MOU. Um, the MOU effectively speaks to consolidating on our operations here in Ogun State, Ogun State naturally being the gateway state in, in, in the southwest um, and beyond. Um, is, is a growing state with a thriving and buoyant economy. So the overall objective is to increase our foothold here, expand the capacity to meet um, the needs of the citizen and uh, the citizens of Ogun State and the government. Effectively, it's a collaboration. We will be expanding, if looking towards doubling our existing capacity, which is around five megawatts. It's a collaboration with the state and the entire stakeholders um, across the value chain. We will partner with Ogun State, we'll partner with the distribution companies. So it's not going to be a, call it singular effort from Viafen. Tony Alaniro, OGTV News. In order to sustain the provision of quality services and the allocation of land title documents, the state government, through the Bureau of Land and Survey, has issued additional 3,000 certificates of occupancy to qualified candidates out of the 3,123 applicants whose applications were initiated by the immediate past administration. The Director General, Special Advisor to the Governor in charge of the Bureau, disclosed this while presenting the 2021 budget of the Bureau at the Assembly Complex Okemoso Abiyokuta. Kola Waleoso's report is presented in this package. While defending the 2021 budget of the Bureau of Lands and Survey, the Director General Barista Aino Salami presented a total budget estimate of 974 million naira, comprising of 524.9 million naira for capital projects and 449 million naira for recurrent expenditure, while expected revenue was fixed at 10 billion naira, he explained at the Bureau had been working with all concerned agencies to ensure that the backlogs of applications for title documents were being cleared, having contacted those with various queries discovered during inspection. This administration came on board 
as uh, the Honourable Member has rightly put it, government will continue. We've been uh, finalising applications that were made before this application came forward. And it's on record that we have registered since May, June 2019 till now, over 3,000, specifically 3,123 HOC have registered. And uh, almost 3,000 of them have been connected because we usually get in touch with them by text messages and all of that to make sure they come and collect their certificate. In another development, the State Commissioner for Physical Planning and Urban Development, Town Planner Olatunji Odunlami, presented the 2021 budget proposal of the Ministry with an affirmation that it would be better repositioned in the next fiscal year. This, he noted, would be achieved with more stringent measures and strategies towards strengthening existing and enforcing physical planning regulations in communities across the state. Odunlami noted that such measures was aimed at promoting an orderly and pleasing environment for good living in line with the mission of the present administration. The commissioner thereafter presented 1.14 billion naira as capital expenses with 207 million naira for recurrent expenditure, giving the total budget size of 1.34 billion naira with 492 million naira expected as revenue to government coffers. The Ministry of Housing, the State Housing Corporation, the State Planning and Development Permit Authority, amongst others, also defended their budget estimates before the lawmakers. The State Minister of Health has disclosed that more efforts were being put in place by the state government to combat and flatten the curves of the second wave of COVID-19 pandemic in all parts of the state, as over 42,000 people have undergone the COVID test sampling, out of which 2,300 were confirmed positive and 33 deaths recorded since the outbreak of the pandemic in the state. The State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Tommy Coker, stated this at the ongoing 2021 budget defense session held at the Assembly Complex Okemoso Abiokuta. Again, Kola Wale presented in this package. Commissioner for Health, Dr. Tommy Coker, while defending the 2021 budget of the ministry, explained that the state government had initiated measures to improve on the testing capacity carried out across the 20 local government areas adding that the state government had received accolades for the massive testing, which would reach a total of 50,000 people in the coming week, resulting into 1% of the state population as required by regulatory bodies. The commissioner noted that the state is still running its various isolation centers and decided to close down those that were underutilized, adding that it will review its COVID-19 operations in the first week of next year for effective assessments of its various facilities. As a state, we've tested over 42,000 individuals in the state. For every state, it's 1%. Um, and we are on, by next week, we'll be at our 1%, which is 50,000. And uh, the state has been commended. It's actually one of the only states that continues to test um, the community. So we're doing very well there. Commenting on primary health care facilities in the state, COCA, said the present administration had rehabilitated a total of 21 primary health care centers, PHC, with another 21 undergoing renovation across the state, out of the total of 236 to be refurbished in the next fiscal year. Presenting a total budget size of 4.5 billion naira for the ministry in the next fiscal year, 2.9 billion naira was earmarked for capital projects and 1.61 billion naira for salaries and allowances, while 63.6 million naira was expected as revenue. On his part, the Permanent Secretary, State Hospitals Management Board, Dr. Nofiu Aigoro, submitted that the repairs of health centers would go up 925.6 million naira, while 460 million naira would go for the construction of new and expansion of existing health facilities, including dental centers across the state, with 743.9 million naira earmarked for procurement of health and medical equipment for next year. Aiguru explained that out of the total budget proposal of 6.2 billion naira for the fiscal year, 2.61 billion naira was to cater for capital expenditure, with the remaining 3.66 billion naira for recurrent expenditure, just as 23.7 million naira was expected as revenue in the next year. Earlier, the State Commissioner for Environment, Honorable Abdul Balogun, presented the 2021 budget proposal of the ministry before the lawmakers with a promise to sustain a cleaner 
an healthier environment through continuous environmental sanitation and waste management system. To achieve the foregoing, Balogun presented a total budget of 1.6 billion naira consisting of 1.13 billion naira to cater for capital expenditure with 545.5 million naira for recurrent expenditure and 192 million naira expected as revenue. The lawmakers also considered the proposed budget estimates of the State Waste Management Authority, State Environmental Protection Agency, State Emergency Management Agency, State Hospitals, Shokenu Ijai, Abeokuta, Ilaru, Ota, Ijebude, and Ishara, amongst others. And still talking health. Nigeria recorded 930 new confirmed coronavirus infections on Wednesday, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control has said. The federal government had warned that the country was on the verge of a second wave of the pandemic and had ordered the reopening of all isolation and treatment centers, which had been closed due to reduced patient load. Given an update, the NCDC stated that on the 16th of December 2020, 930 new confirmed cases were recorded in Nigeria. Till date, 75,062 cases have been confirmed. 66,775 cases have been discharged and 1,200 deaths have been recorded in 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory. The 930 new cases are reported in states. Lagos with the highest of 279 FCT 179, Plateau State 62, Kaduna 54, Kano and Katsina 52 each, Imo and Digawa 42 each, Rivers 38, Kuala 30, Nasarawa 19, Yobe 15, Ogun 13, Bornu 10, Oyo and Niger State 9 cases each, Eboy and Bauchi 6 each, Edo 5, Taraba 4, Sokoto and Cross River States 2 each. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation and Chairman of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, Boss Mustafa, observed rather sadly that Nigerians, particularly some faith-based organizations, have continued to hold events of large gatherings capable of spreading the virus. And to Niger State, where the state government has directed all civil servants to stay at home from December 21st, 2020. This is to avert the second wave of the coronavirus pandemic following the increased number of cases in recent times. The governor's directive was contained in a statement signed by the head of service, Niger State, Salamatu Abubakar, on Thursday. According to the statement, the workers are to stay at home till further notice. The directive, however, excludes workers on essential services. Niger State has recorded 302 cases of COVID-19 with 12 deaths. 17 local government areas have so far recorded cases of the virus. On November 9, 2020, Governor Abubakar Belu had announced that he had tested positive for COVID-19 but on 16th November, the governor recovered from the virus. Away from COVID-19, the state government has charged all risk managers in the state to put up their best during the upcoming festive period to make the state clean. Special advisor to the governor on environment and chief executive officer of the State Waste Management Authority, Ola Oresoya, gave the charge at a crucial stakeholders meeting held at a Guama headquarters, Old Secretariat, Abiyokuta. Shemilori Makonju has the details. Members of the Waste Managers Association of Nigeria, Ogun State Chapter, have met with the state government for a meeting ahead of the festive period, speaking at the engagement with the stakeholders. Special Advisor to the State Governor on Environment, Ola Oresoya, said with the influx of people during festive season, more waste will be generated as they are expected to dispose all waste generated properly. If you don't appear to retain, you'll be in charge of defacing the city and destroying public property. And there will be fines. In our public 
city of Rome State that they fight for it. They are destroying government property. You go to jail for six months, or you pay fine of, uh, I think, uh, one million naira or several thousand. So, if you don't refuse inside drainage, you are destroying government property. Arrestoya also charged them to be dedicated and improve on their earlier efforts in the past months. I'm, I'm here to explain the mechanism that's on ground to ensure effective policing. So, and what they are saying that policing should be 100% or exploring 100%. No. There is no system that is absolute anyway. The Secretary of Awan in the state Femi Okulalu and Fdelaja, on behalf of others, expressed readiness to work fully during the festive period. To have engaged a square peg, put a square peg in a square hole, in appointing someone that we refer to as the hunter of waste, an enigma when it comes to waste management in Nigeria. A lot of people are going to change all their house uh, appliance. So we need to be up and doing, yeah, during festive periods. So we must be on field. They also praised government for introducing a new system of waste management, especially the establishment of the Open State Waste Management Authority, Oguama, saying it has gone a long way in redefining waste management in the state. Shemilure, Mahonjo, OGTV News. So to come. Senate passes 2021 to 2023 medium expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. More news and reports shortly after this break. To watch us live on your mobile phone, go to Google Play Store for Android, App Store for iOS, Microsoft Store for Windows. Download OGTV mobile app. Click open and click watch live TV. OG TV, the people's stand. So watching OGTV Make News. Okun State Governor Prince Dafo Abiodun has urged the people of the state to celebrate this year's Christmas moderately because of the second wave of COVID-19. He made the play at the State Government's Christmas Carol and Service of Nine Lessons held at the June 12 Cultural Center in Abiokuta. Governor Abiodun said this became necessary to avoid the dangers of the spread of the virus. It's been a very, very challenging and unusual year. Please continue to be patient with us. This is a season of love. Christmas is a season of love. It's a season where we must show each other compassion. Let us go out of our way. You know, to be nice to one another. It's been a very tough year. In a year when people have lost their jobs, the year when businesses have closed down is a year when if you cumulatively add people's, some people's income, it probably amounts to maybe having worked two or three months in the entire year. So let us find ways and means to touch other people by being kind to them. This is the true essence of Christmas. But let us ensure that as we celebrate this year, let us celebrate with moderation. Let us celebrate with moderation. Let us be responsible in this year's celebration. And the reason for that is very simple. We thought that we, pandemic, the pandemic of COVID-19 was behind us. However, we now begin to see a second wave of COVID-19. I was in a virtual National Economic Council meeting this afternoon. And it took the entire time of our deliberation. Because just yesterday, the level of prevalence, just infection yesterday was almost a thousand. Just yesterday, that was more 
than we even had during the lockdown. And the FC minister told us that the isolation centers in Abuja are even have room. They've run out of capacity. Kaduna governor also said the same thing. He's got over 500 cases. Lagos is also the same story. And we know that our borders and boundaries are very fluid. People are going to be traveling during this period. So the rate of spread of this infection will increase. Our children are coming back home on holidays. We need to be responsible. Governor Dodo also thanked people of the state for their support during the trying time of COVID-19 pandemic, noting that despite the pandemic, the state achieved a lot, especially in the area of agriculture. The colorful event featured the usual singing of Christmas hymns and reading of Bible lessons. The first lesson of the evening was read by the wife of the governor, Mrs. Bamidele Abiodo, while the last was read by the governor, Prince Dako Abiodo. First, Hari turned 78 today, December 17, 2020. He remains Nigeria's oldest, oldest civilian, civilian leader in power. Ido Fabajo, in this report, X-rays the achievements of vision in the areas of socio-economic and the political growth. His report. Born in 1942 to a Fulani family on 17 December 1942 in Daura, Katsina State, he attended primary school in Daura, Katsina State in 1953 and Katsina Provincial Secondary School from 1956 to 1961 and enrolled at age 19 in the Nigerian Military Training College, now Nigerian Defense Academy. He took over office first as a major general and became Nigeria's head of state in 1983 at the age of 41. Wari ran for president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in 2003, 2007, and 2011. In December 2014, he emerged as the nominee of the All Progressives Congress for the 2015 general elections. Buhari won the election, defeating the then incumbent President Goodluck Jonathan. It was the first time in the history of Nigeria that an incumbent president lost a general election. He was sworn in on 29 May 2015. It's very bad indeed because there is a failure of neighborhood security in the sense that those who are perpetrating these uh, atrocities against communities and against the uh, state and the country, they come from somewhere in Nigeria. Their neighborhoods know them. In February 2019, Buhari was re-elected, defeating his closest rival, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, by over 3 million votes. President Muhammad Buhari ventured into full politics, and after three attempts, he became Nigeria's fourth democratically elected president. 15, since the Fourth Republic in 1999, and won re-election in 2019, he remains Nigeria's oldest civilian leader in power as he celebrates 78 years on earth. Here is wishing him happy birthday. Very well, Augustine Governor Prince Dako Abiodu has felicitated with President Muhammad Buhari Uklad 78 on Thursday. A statement by Governor Abiodu's Chief Press Secretary, Kwale Chumori, said the governor shares in the joy of the president's birthday and wishes him well in the arduous task of nation building. The statement adds that as the president continues to serve the nation with an uncommon sense of patriotism and unwavering dedication, Almighty God will continue to grant him a life of great accomplishments and abiding fulfillment. The governor said he had no doubt that as President Buhari celebrates his birthday, he will be more concerned about the myriad of challenges facing the nation and how to resolve them to the advantage of the people. A good state, he said, shares in both the joy and challenges and prays that this birthday will bring him good fortune to address the security, economic, and polit political challenges 
fits in the country. The Senate on Thursday passed the 2021-2023 medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. The passage followed the consideration of a harmonized conference report of the Joint Committee of the Senate and House of Representatives. In this presentation, Chairman of the Senate Committee on Finance, Senator Solomon Adiola, said the conference report of the Senate and House was harmonized position of both chambers upon examination of the differences contained in the 2021-2023 medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. According to the Joint Committee of the two chambers, after due deliberations, recommended a daily crude oil production be pegged at 1.86 million barrels per day, benchmark oil price at $40 per barrel, exchange rate at 379 naira to 1 US dollar, gross domestic product rate at 3%, inflation rate at 11.95%, and the federal government retained revenue at 7.99 trillion naira. And the Senate on Thursday confirmed eight nominees as members of the Governing Council of the Hydroelectric Power Producing Areas Development Commission, HYPODEC. The nominees were confirmed by the upper chamber after reconsideration of a report of the Senate Committee on Power, chaired by Senator Gabriel Susan. Susan, in his presentation, recalled that the nominations were made by President Muhammad Buhari, pursuant to Section 3, Subsection 1 of the Hydroelectric Power Producing Areas Development Commission. Act 2018 as amended. He added that the committee during screening found the nominees to be qualified and experienced to be appointed as chairman, managing director, and members of the governing council of HyperDeck. Terrorist group Boko Haram has released a video showing teenagers purportedly abducted from government science secondary school, Kankara Katsuma State. Gunmen had invaded the school premises last Friday and abducted over 300 students after a gun duel with the police. The abduction took place some hours after the president arrived in Daura, Katsina, for a week-long private visit. The leader of the terror group, Abubakar Chikau, later released a video claiming responsibility for the dastardly act. The defense headquarters has, however, discredited the claim, insisting the act was carried out by bandits. But a fresh video released by Boko Haram and Mid Public on Thursday shows teenagers believed to be the Kankara school boys. The six minutes and 30 seconds long video featured pictures purportedly from Chikau and a teenager believed to be one of the abducted school boys. According to reports, the video was sent via the same channel as previous messages by Boko Haram. The distraught teenager speaking in English and Awusa in the video said he was among the students taken by the gang of Abu Shikau. And youth under the ages of the Coalition of Northern Groups on Thursday staged a peaceful protest in Katsuma State over the abduction of students of Government Science Secondary School, Kankara. Members of the group carried placards with various inscriptions, among which are and not destroy it, and nobody is safe in the north, and banditry now, and bring our boys. The group earlier addressed a press conference during which it lampooned the federal government over its failure to provide security for Nigerians as enshrined in the constitution. The statement at the press conference was read by its national coordinator, Palarabi Rufai. A 62-year-old man born hell and hurt but has now been amputated and on the verge of ending his life as a disabled has brought his petition before the Ogun State Judicial Panel of Investigation on Police Brutality, Human Rights Violations and Extrajudicial Killings. Benga Adekoya covered the procedures at the Auditorium of Magistrate Court 1, Ishabo Abiokuta, venue of the sitting. Ogun Judicial Panel of Investigation was set up to investigate complaints of victims on police brutality, 
human rights violations, and extrajudicial killings by security operatives within the state. At its sitting on Wednesday, the 16th of December 2020, the first petition brought before the judicial panel was a pathetic story of one apostle Anthony Olaolua Kushimo, a 62-year-old man living at Okejemo Street, Abeokuta, who was allegedly brutalized by a police officer around Ake Axis of Abeokuta on the 9th of February 2012, at about 3.30 in the afternoon. Speaking on his ordeal, the victim said he was shot in the leg by a police officer identified as Moshud on that fateful day, and since then his life never remained the same as his right leg was amputated due to non-availability of medical attention while in police custody for 37 days and later sold his uncompleted building in the course of the treatment. Apostle Kushimo said he was later taken to High Court 7 in Nishabo, Apeokuta, as the deed had been done on the 8th of September 2012, where he was released for having no case to answer. He thereafter pleaded for compensation and bringing the culprits to the book while presenting the photo evidences of his ordeal to the panel. Another petition brought before the panel was a story of Mr. Gwenga Kende, who was arrested along with his three other friends on October 17. 2017 at about 6 a.m. in the morning at Emure, Ijabode, and were taken to Magbo in Abeokuta, where they were accused of stealing fish worth 63 million naira from a farm in Ijabode. According to the petitioner, he and his friends spent almost three months in the police custody with several daily torture for an offence they did not commit. The IPO of the said case, Inspector Adam Abubraka, was allowed to interface with the petitioner. After several hours of interrogation by the panel, the case was later adjourned till 1st February 2021. In furtherance to its commitment to transforming and upgrading the transportation system across the state, the chairman of the State Parks and Garages Development Agency, Honorable Abib Ajayi, held a maiden meeting with representatives of transport operators in the state. The meeting took place at the agency's office complex, Ibarra Abiyokuta. Ife Shulwadi has the details. Ensuring that life gets easier for the people through an affordable, accessible and effective transport system, the Parks and Garages Development Agency was set up in Ogun State. This necessitated the hosting of operators at the OGBC Conference Room Ibarra Housing Estate, Abeokuta, where the chairman of State Parks and Garages Development Agency, Honorable Abib Ajayi, enumerated the board's positions and policies before the representatives. He highlighted at the top of the agenda updated registration of public and private motorcycles and vehicles so as to have detailed records of all transporters and hold perpetrators of atrocities accountable. Anybody operating uh, parks and garages without our registration should note that the board of Angada is not going to take that any longer. Uh, we want to have a database and want to know those who are operating our industry. Honorable Ajayi warned transporters loading their vehicles along motor highways to desist from the act or face the consequences. He also passed a message to transporters and traders dealing in illicit drugs and drinks in all the state's motor parks and garages. We will not hesitate to bring in the NGLA into the parks. We will not hesitate to ask the police to chase them away. I've always maintained that how can you travel interstate in Ogun State and you don't even have what is called a, a, a manifest? You know, it's not for anything. Just let us have your record. Your name and your phone number is enough. And we are looking at possibility of having insurance to people who are, you know, making use of the park. So that in case of any accident, the insurance can come in at no extra cost to the passengers. The chairman maintained that Pagada, under his watch, will be ready to partner with other principal actors and private investors in order to achieve the policies and vision of the state government. For instance, we are going to concession some of our parks and give it to people who can run it effectively. Yet, the unions will still perform their functions and the agency will still do what they have to do. But I know there are investors in the state that are ready to go into all these things and put in their money. We want to provide an enabling environment for them to be able to do the needed. He reiterated that the agency will not be intervening in the activities of other agencies or unions but will, in accordance to its obligations, supervise their activities. Ife Shuluade, OGTV News.
The Association of Primary School Head Teachers, an ubiquitous North local government area of Fugan State, organized a grand retirement celebration party for retiring head teachers in the council area. The retirees were charged to be happy and see the retirement as a change in lifestyle and opportunity to move closer to God. Benga Adekoya's report is presented in this package. The celebration of meritorious service it was at the open field of Owu African Church Primary School in Tayalode, Abeokuta, where 45 head teachers in Abeokuta North Local Government Area of Abu State bowed out of service after a mandatory 35 years of service. The event was put together by the Association of Primary School Head Teachers of Nigeria, Abeokuta North. I give all the glory to Almighty God for giving us the grace to organize a befitting send-off program in honor of our senior citizens in the most noble and important profession the world has ever known, the teaching profession. The Permanent Secretary, Minister of Education, Science and Technology in the state, Mrs. Abosede Ogunleye, led other dignitaries to deliver their farewell speeches. Today is a day that one should give glory to the Most High God who has made it possible. If it has not been the Lord on our side, the Bible says only God knows what would have happened. When we flash back to the day we were employed, and we consider how many of our colleagues that were employed together with us and those that are retiring together today, we will have every cause to glorify what God Almighty has done for us. The State Commissioner for Rural Development and the Chairman of the Day, Honorable Ludo Tuntaiwo, while charging the retirees to be more active in their communities and in the house of God, thank God for their lives. You need time to be happy, go closer to God, enjoy yourself and relax your mind. For God to have taken you this far, I think you deserve enough rest and enough happiness at this point in time. Some of the retirees appreciated God on the journey so far. We are retiring today not because we are up to 60, but because we have served meritoriously for 35 good years. Cutting of the celebration cake, presentation of gift to the best teachers, and different cultural display wrapped up the event. Congratulations to them. A sum of 13.5 million naira grant has been distributed to 200 small-scale enterprises in Ososa, Egun State, by the Rotary Club of Bagada District 9110 Nigeria. Presenting the checks to the beneficiaries, District Governor Rotarian Bola Oyebadi said the aim of the initiative, which began in 2009, is to empower small-scale businesses in Ososa. Ido Fabaju reports. Rotary Club has six areas of focus, one of which is economic development and empowerment towards ensuring that small-scale enterprises that are not open to bank loan are assisted. The Rotary Club of Bagada District 9110 and Rotary Club of Ann Arbor North District 6380 United States of America, in partnership with Star Microfinance Bank of Sosa Ogun State, in 2009, established poverty alleviation and economic empowerment, tagged a microcredit scheme in Ososa, Ogun State. It began with 1 million naira, and now it is 13.5 million naira, with the disbursement of checks to 200 beneficiaries in Ososa. We know very well that if you're able to empower one person, what it means here in Nigeria is that over four, five, six people have been taken care of. So we are excited in Rotary and in particular in our district, District 910 Nigeria, through the Rotary Club of Bagada, that this kind of initiative was seven years ago and it's still been sustained till date. Uh, this is uh, economic and community development. That is to see how we can empower people who are in need. It was a very low, in fact, Rotary is not collecting any interest on this thing. The bank that is handling it is allowed to take just 1% as the interest. So it's like a non-interest loan. 
But our joy as a club is seeing people happy with and using the money for the purpose of enhancing their business or businesses. Then we also do KYC to their business. We check them, we check their businesses, how they are moving. Then we give them training program to enlighten them how they can do best in their businesses. No, I don't go. No, I don't talk like that. You better. You're a mini ferrotiro, you know. Stakeholders at the event said Rotary Club of Bagada District 9110 will not relent in making life more meaningful for rural dwellers, especially in this challenging period. Under this, we have a microcredit scheme where we uh, have the privilege to help our community by giving them uh, small loans to help their business. We are extending this program to adjoining communities to ensure that um, scheme is not only restricted to our society. Earlier, the beneficiaries were taken through rigorous training on record keeping and how to spend the money judiciously. Ido Fabaju, OGTV News. Thank you, Ido. Federal government, states, councils, shared 601.110 billion naira in November. This and other business as well. Federation Accounts Allocation Committee shared a total of 601.110 billion naira in November 2020. Federation accounts revenue to the federal, state, and local government councils and agencies. According to a statement from the Office of Accountants General of the Federation, the 601 billion era comprised statutory revenue of 436.457 billion era, value added tax revenue of 156.786 billion era, and augmentation of 7.867 billion era from the forex equalization revenue, gross statutory revenue of 436.457 billion era available for the month of November 2020 was higher than the 378.148 billion era received in the previous month by 58.309 billion naira. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has warned operators against paying recipients of diaspora remittances in local currencies. It warned that violators could lose their operational licenses if they failed to comply with its guidelines on remittances. The CBN said it remained to promoting transparency in the administration of diaspora remittances into Nigeria and will stabilize and deepen the foreign exchange market. Industrial customers and other entitled receiving gas through the pipeline that was ruptured in Maguro, Ogun State, have seen supply cut off following the isolation of the affected section of the line. The Nigerian Gas Marketing Company, a subsidiary of Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, was the operator of the pipeline at distribution line supplying gas, majorly to industries. An NNPC official said that the isolation of the ruptured part of the pipeline had disrupted supply to customers, especially manufacturing companies in Ogun State and beyond. The NNPC had assured motorists and residents along the axis of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway of safety around the scene of the ga gas pipeline rupture in that area. It's time to bring you the news the world today.